everyone, Todd Metalhead Weatherman here. Hopefully everyone's doing well. Hopefully everyone's okay with me changing things up tonight. You know, we've been talking about severe weather and there's more to talk about. I'm sure a lot of you will bring up the fact that there is a day five and day six slight risk at the time of me making this video. Don't worry, you will get that video in the morning. But we also need to discuss hurricane season as well, which is looking like it could be pretty busy. So we're gonna go all over all our sources here and get a look at what could lie ahead and then even go over a couple outlooks and even give my own thoughts on it. So I hope you enjoy this video. Make sure you hit that like button. Make sure you get that notification bell on, especially if you're over towards the hurricane prone area. And also hit that subscribe button if you're new around here and also hit, and also hit that share button too. I'm trying to get to a thousand subs by the end of this year. I think we can do it. Definitely would love some help with that. But that being said, let's go. So we've been talking about this graph for a while here, the Enzo graph. This is the Nino 3.4 region. Yes, if, you're, if you hear the word Nino, I am talking about El Nino. Albeit, El Nino is only a phase for this region. This is a particularly a phase where we're dealing with above average sea surface temperatures particularly above average sea surface temperatures above 0.5 degrees. If you want more details on that, click the video link in the right hand corner here. But what we need to look at here is this transition. We were at what was actually considered a really strong El Nino by the end of 2023. And where we are right now, which is this mark right here between April, May and June, we're now entering what's called a neutral phase here where we have those ocean temperatures or sea surface temperatures as they're actually called here right at zero degrees celsius above or below average here so we've made a pretty abrupt transition because usually this takes a little bit longer to occur especially in a strong el nino but this has happened very rapidly and this is also going to alter our severe weather in the days ahead we've talked about that a lot in some of the monthly outlooks we've done here on the channel now hurricane season doesn't start until june 1st now i'm wondering what i'm sure what you're thinking okay ty it's only april 4th why are we talking about june outlooks have already been coming out and the findings have been very interesting especially considering that we have gone from one spectrum to the complete opposite spectrum by this time frame. So six months, we were at near record breaking levels with an El Nino, and we've shifted now to a La Nina where the sea surface temperatures are now cooler than average. The thing to make note of here is La Nina's, especially weaker La Nina's, have often attributed to more active hurricane seasons. And interestingly enough, if we look at some analogs here, a year that a lot of people might remember, 2011. Hurricane Irene happened in 2011. Will we see a repeat of that? Can't guarantee that with this one. Not saying it will or won't happen, but remember 1999, another active season. 2010, another active season. Ten so the tendency we tend to have during La Nina years pretty busy especially in areas where we're a little bit more prone to landfall seeing a lot of anomalous activity over towards the Caribbean and also towards the Gulf especially troubling sign that I see here is the increasing amount of activity towards this straight here the th reason why I say that is normally when you see storms form over towards this region there's really nowhere else for this storm to go other than into land. Either it hits land or it dissipates. And even then, even if it dissipates and it isn't a weak hurricane, it still can bring a lot of rainfall and cause a lot of issues towards wherever it ends up veering off to. Because that's just ultimately how things play out when it comes to these systems. But the thing to make note of is this region is looking increasingly active on these analogs and we may see a very similar situation occur this season. Of course, these other regions that I'm looking at here where we're seeing these uh, red outlines here, especially the sharper shades of red, this is towards our main development region. So it's not surprising to see these areas light up a little bit. This area towards Bermuda, not uncommon. 
Another area of interest though, however, is right off of the southeast coast. This is also where Irene had ended up forming. So, like I said, very interesting findings that I'm getting just from these analogs alone. And then also towards Mexico, we're going to include you too on this. A lot of activity towards this region too. 2010 was a notable year for this region as well. So like I said, gonna have to be watching the weather here. Like I said, get that notification bell on and we'll do the best we can to track all that we can in regards to hurricane season. It might be the guy for you. But that being said, we're gonna actually go ahead and take a look at the forecast as to what could lie ahead for this hurricane season here. Now, as we mentioned before, we are shifting into a weak La Nina here. This is where in this region right here, we will see or experience below average sea surface temperatures in comparison to the traditional anomalies. And that's very well reflected here. We're right at, or maybe just a little bit under negative one degree Celsius or above, depending on your perspective here. But fact in the matter is weak La Nina. And then also another alarming signal I see here is these areas right here where in the orange, we have those above average sea surface temperatures. You want warm waters when it comes to tropical development. And we're already seeing those in a couple of those regions in particular. Then I have another map I can look at here where you can see more of that. And you can even see the Gulf of Mexico coming into the fray here, where we have those above average sea surface temperatures here. Then along this little straight next to the Panama Canal, also above average as well. So seeing all these signals, including the main development region where we have those above average sea surface temperatures, that could be a cause for concern to a more active season, which is pretty much already being indicated to me at this current point in time. Now, as we go further along with more outlooks to come, we're going to make an update probably, I would say, around the middle of May. We're going to get more in depth to the parameters from this point here. But just seeing these signals already is uh, giving me a decent relative idea of what to expect here. Now, if we continue to go forward, we're going to already take a look at what our sea surface temperatures are looking like now compared to average. Now, of course, during the winter, a lot of the areas that we look at for hurricane development are usually cooler than average, too cool for us to really be concerned with much of anything right now, along with the wind pattern. Wind pattern is the other variable that you need when it comes to tropical development. A little bit different from tornadoes where you want less wind shear. With tornadoes, you want more wind shear. But if we couple in the sea surface temperatures, we're already above average in our main development region. And we see a fair amount of above average temperatures already towards the Gulf. There are a few pockets where we're below average, a few cold pockets here and there. But as we go further along into the year, these are going to warm up. So, like I said, that's another signal that I'm making note of here. And then actually, if you look at this region right now towards our Nino 3.4, we're actually starting to see an increase in those below average sea surface temperatures right there. So we're making the transition right now. Transition may even happen a little bit faster than what was being forecast on that figure where we were looking at the Enzo graph here. So like I said, and have to keep an eye on things as we continue to go forward here. Not quite reaching La Nina territory, but we're progressing towards it at a pretty quick rate. So if we were to go ahead and take a look at some outlooks here, this first one that we're looking at is from the Colorado State University, very reliable source here when it comes to tropical systems. This number right here is the average number that we see per year in regards to named storms well above the mark here we're at 23 number of days where we could have named storms this is the average number here 69.4 we're looking at 115 hurricanes storms that can make it with uh, wind speeds above 74 miles an hour 
typically we see seven seeing 11 hurricane days of course being above average to correlate along with that major hurricanes another big parameter right there we have to look at typically on average we see about three we're expecting five from them according to the colorado state university here nearly double the major hurricane days i don't really pay attention too much to the hurricane days parameter as much as i'm watching parameters like this me being a weather nerd of course you would expect that accumulated cyclone energy in a way i almost kind of look at this as i would look at cape for severe weather of course this takes in the takes into account the environment especially with those warmer ocean waters our typical average 123 we're looking at 210 being forecast and then also i'm going to go ahead and put a little map over here really quickly but the accumulated cyclone energy that's going to be west of the 60 degree west line typically it's 73 we're seeing 125 so there's a lot of energy that's going to be closer to land basically so we have to be like i said have to be watchful for, some, for maybe a couple of stronger uh, tropical cyclones maybe being closer to land than what we would like so definitely need to be watching even closer than we did last season and we still had a pretty major system where even though we were expecting above uh not even above average numbers right maybe right around neutral or even below average just slightly and again pretty much following the trend of everything else on the parameter side of things our net tropical cyclone activity ntc above average here 135 percent is about average 220 is the forecast average some other interesting notes here probabilities for at least one major hurricane which is category three and above landfall on each of the following coastal areas the entire continental u.s coastline is at 62 percent average is 43 percent so that that pretty much is just kind of telling the story here so to speak doesn't mean be scared doesn't mean that hurricane is going to hit you directly but the chances are a little bit above average kind of makes sense considering a more active season is forecast but another area i want people to pay extra close attention to florida south and east of cedar key this is the peninsula of florida 34 percent chance of a major hurricane potentially landfalling across that area in comparison to 21 percent and then the entire gulf coast west and north of cedar key all the way to brownsville texas 42% chance versus a 27% chance, which is average. Probability for at least one major hurricane tracking through the Caribbean, 66% against 47% being the average. So like I said, it looks like it could be a pretty busy time for hurricane season. So let's make sure we're doing what we need to do to stay weather aware. And I'll do my best I can to keep you guys updated here along with our news media as much as possible here so another source we can look at here while there isn't as many details available accuweather has been pretty good over the last few years in regards to its forecasting they're also calling for 20 to 25 named storms here and if you look at what the university of colorado state was showing 23 storms right in that same ballpark as AccuWeather and keep in mind AccuWeather did their forecast a few weeks earlier so the fact that both of these that both of these agencies and universities are seeing a trend seeing a trend here that is leading to a more active hurricane season is definitely an attention grabber for sure well like again I'm not trying to hype this up but definitely something that we need to be paying closer attention to and the other thing to make note of is the national hurricane center will be making an update in the middle of next month so we will be doing another update video by then with a comparison graph lastly i've made my own little comparison graph kind of portraying more or less what i was thinking would occur here 
keep in mind I'm not necessarily I won't call myself a professional or anything I'm just kind of going off of some of the stuff that I saw this is basically my look right here see 23 name storms I'm agreeing with Colorado State there 11 hurricanes maybe six major hurricanes mainly reason mainly why I went with six on that one is truthfully because of what I was seeing with the analogs and the sea surface temperatures already being above average here of course we'll see if anything ends up verifying we're still months away from even the start of hurricane season uh, this is just kind of giving a quick rundown of what we could expect and some of my own thoughts to go along with it take this with a grain of salt of course because again still far away and nothing's set in stone at this point as we all know with weather that being said i hope you guys enjoyed if you did you know what to do smash that like button hit that subscribe button if you're new around here and make sure you have that notification bell on but I'll see you guys very soon. Once again, it's been Tired Metalhead Weatherman. You guys have an awesome rest of your evening. And once again, see you later.